everyone. Today I'm going to be doing a My Evolution as a Reader discussion video and pretty much just talking about how my reading has changed throughout my life and how I came to be interested in the books that I am currently interested in. And this actually came about because I was having a conversation with someone and I was sort of talking about the books that I liked reading and I thought I was sort of attuned with the genres that I like because I am literally a booktuber. I go on here all the time and talk and talk and talk about books. But I was talking to this person and they brought it to my attention that I like modernism and that all my favorite books are modernist and that that's like what I'm interested in is modernism. And I was like, no, <laughs> you're wrong. I don't like modernism. I say this all the time. I don't prefer it. Not my favorite type of writing. Not really a genre, just not my favorite style of writing. But then I, I thought about it during the conversation, but I couldn't like fully process that because my mind was too like blown at the moment. But I processed it after and I was like, Valerie, your favorite books are literally The Maltese Falcon. You like crime books. You like books written in the 20th and 21st centuries. You like books that have to do with modernity. That's why you love The Maltese Falcon so much is because it highlights just some of the absurdities of modernity. And the little light bulb went off in my head, but I was just so, so confused because I don't know, I've just said I don't like modernism so many times. I feel like when I started college, I was like, I don't like modern literature. Here we are. Here we are. Apparently that's what I am interested in now. I feel like those are my favorite types of books right now. And it completely makes sense to me now, but it was just a little moment, a little moment of like mental disconnect for me. So then since I was like, well, I clearly don't even understand my reading journey. Let me try to talk through it to you all so we all can understand it. I don't know, but we'll see. I'm going to start with the reading of my childhood. I was a reader from literally the moment I could talk. Before I could read, um, I had this like Winnie the Pooh book that I forgot the name of it, but it was like a sleepover Winnie the Pooh book. And before I could read, I had like memorized the book and would like recite it back, but I couldn't read yet. But I was a reader since that Winnie the Pooh book. And it wasn't like a massive feat of knowledge because it was literally like a children's book. I wasn't memorizing like War and Peace or anything, but I did memorize the little book before I could read. And then I learned how to read. The books that I remember reading are very wide. Honestly, I just read anything I could get my hands on. but loved Junie B. Jones. I remember one of my favorite books was Charlotte's Web when I was little. I was a very, very big reader. I read everything and anything. I remember reading like Elle Frank Baum. I remember reading Heidi, Little Princess, a lot of books. And then when I got older, what was happening in my generation when I was younger was Twilight. Twilight happened. I was a hardcore Twilight fan, y'all. I really, really loved those books and they still are nostalgic for me just because it was like a very specific time if you grew up during like the twilight period like of just twilight you know what i mean it was a time of the movies coming out people being very very invested in this franchise i remember waiting in line in target in like a wraparound line to get like a dvd edition of something but it was a time and so that was like a reading era of my life. I wasn't really into the other sort of franchises that were kind of big, like Divergent, I didn't read. I never read a Cassandra Clare book when they were actually coming out. I read one later in life and didn't like it, but I was not a part of that crowd either. And I also never really read like fantasy books. Twilight was my, was what I read. Twilight and then all the other sort of things that I mentioned that I read in childhood. But then at a certain point in high school, my reading came to a complete stop. And I've talked about this before, but what happened was, I don't wanna like place all the blame on this one class that for the reason why this happened. It was a lot of different things, but I took a class, we read like A Tale of Two Cities To Kill a Mockingbird. And I didn't understand A Tale of Two Cities at all, first of all. And then I didn't like To Kill a Mockingbird. And what you are probably are like after my whole little twilight period of this discussion is like, well, maybe you didn't like A Tale of Two Cities because you spent all your time reading Twilight in your youth. But no, I, I want to preface this by saying that I didn't only read Twilight. Then even if I had, that still doesn't change my opinion now that I think freshman year of high school, it's a little ridiculous to be reading A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. I'm sorry, but that is just my opinion. I think the US public school systems are very strange in that in middle school, you 
read, well, at least I read very little, first of all. What I did read was like the outsiders. And then all of a sudden you get to high school and there's like, here's Shakespeare. Here's A Tale of Two Cities. Read it, do something with it. And it was just not a good time. So I had that experience stopped reading completely, not solely because of that class, but it didn't help matters. And so I stopped reading in high school. But then I got to my senior year of high school, and I've talked about this before, I read Jane Eyre, and I was like, oh my goodness, a classic that I understand, a classic that's interesting to me, a classic that I can relate to in some way. And the door was opened for me to go on this apparently very intense literature journey because I'm literally an English literature graduate now. I went to college, that was one of my majors. And so apparently it's it's been a whole process, but it started with Jane Eyre. Jane Eyre was the one that did it, that opened the door for me. When I read Jane Eyre, I became very, very heavily invested in Victorian classics. I was reading like every Victorian classic that I could and also just any classic that I could. I remember I was like, ooh, I want to read Pride and Prejudice. I read The Scarlet Letter and then I read a bunch of Victorian classics like Wuthering Heights. I think I started reading Thomas Hardy. I think George Eliot, Dickens. I started reading Dickens and I started with A Christmas Carol, I think to sort of ease myself into it. And then I read other Dickens and I took it slow and I ended up understanding what I was reading, which was new. I ended up rereading A Tale of Two Cities and enjoying it, which was a full circle moment. And so I got heavily, heavily invested in Victorian classics. And so when I went to college, I didn't go to college as an English major. I wasn't fully like aware of the possibilities that being an English major would provide. So I didn't start college as an English major. I wanted to go into a completely different career path. I did take English classes and the ones that I were looking for were always like Victorian lit, Victorian this, Gothic. I was really into Gothic literature. And then when I got to school, I realized the options for like a first year non-English major are pretty slim for the kind of classes that you're going to take, at least in my program, they didn't really have many exploratory options. I don't know if that's like a universal thing or if it's just my school. So I took Intro to Modern Literature. And I have to say, in hindsight, it was a very interesting class. And this is nothing against the class. But when I was taking the class, I just wanted to be reading Victorian books. And I did not like the class that much. I found it interesting, but I was like, I could be reading Gothic right now. And so that's, I think actually that's when I started saying like, I don't like modern literature because we read Mrs. Dalloway. I didn't really like it. I want to reread it now because my tastes have changed, but didn't like that. Didn't like a lot of what we read actually. Didn't like James Joyce all that much. And so that was where I was freshman year of college. And another thing that I do want to mention that I was sort of fixated on, I guess, as a freshman in college was British literature. That was like what I was reading. I was reading the Brontes, Hardy, Dickens, Eliot, and I didn't really have a conception of all the literature beyond that. My conception of like what classics were, were very British oriented. And I now realize that that's completely wrong completely, completely wrong. There are so many other classics. Britain is not the only producer of literature. And I never thought that, but I did have a very rigid sort of like set of interests. I was like, I'm interested in British classic Victorian lit. That's it. But then you start taking classes in college and I really got stretched in my conception of what my interests could entail. It's not just the Victorians, even though I still love them, but it's not just the Victorians. Really enough, I did not ever read like Dickens or a Bronte or a Hardy or I was going to say a Shakespeare, but yes, I did. I took an entire class. I didn't really read any of them throughout my degree. I took a Britlet 1 and a Britlet 2 class but I didn't read those authors. I read other authors, but it wasn't necessarily like the authors that I was expecting to be reading because again, my conception was very narrow. So then we flash forward to when I'm actually like a declared English major and I get to take my electives. And this is when I start taking things like detective fiction, like noir, like post-colonial literature, like American literature, but it was also a really cool, different American literature class. It wasn't just like my typical conception of American literature. All of these classes that 
go beyond what freshman year Valerie wanted to read. Freshman year Valerie just wanted to be a Victorianist. I get to take all of these cool classes. So when I started dabbling in these classes and reading things like Kindred as an assignment, reading The Maltese Falcon, reading The White Tiger, reading just books that are completely different from Jane Eyre and from what my interests were as a freshman and really, really loving them. And those ended up being my favorite books that I read for my degree. It wasn't Austen. It didn't end up being Dickens, even though, again, I still love those authors. It did end up being like the Chester Hines, the Dashiell Hammett, the Octavia Butler, the Aravind Adida, the Edith Wharton. I ended up liking Edith Wharton, even though previously I said I didn't. All of these 20th and 21st century authors I ended up really really enjoying when previously I was only really reading 19th century authors, sometimes 18th century but mostly 19th century. And so I honestly don't know how I didn't realize this sooner but I had this conversation when this person was telling me like oh so you're interested in modernism and I was like how dare you? No just kidding I wasn't actually like how dare you but I was just like, wait, what? I am? And then I thought about it and I was like, oh my goodness, I am. So now it makes perfect sense. I mean, I love the Maltese Falcon so much and it's because it explores questions of modernity, of capitalism. It uses that sort of style to convey that. I loved Chester Himes's Cotton Comes to Harlem. It does the same thing. It is very like absurd because it is trying to just show the absurdity of certain aspects of racism in America, of modern capital in America, of all of those themes and that's why I like it. And so now I think that if I were to reread Mrs. Dalloway, if I were to reread James Joyce, if I were to reread, insert any modernist author here, I think I would really, really like it. And so in conclusion, I'm probably going to give modernism as a whole another chance because I realize now that my favorite books that I ended up reading in college ended up being from the 20th and the 21st century. And it's because they deal with all of these themes that I'm interested in within that certain time period. Post-colonialism, I've mentioned this before, a really, really big interest for me. Ideas about race and class and modern society, all of these, I mean, they're not absent from books that are prior, but I think when you get to the 20th and 21st century, a lot of these issues begin to take center stage in the way that they're written, particularly, of course, when it comes to just writing about the modern condition. And so all of this, this very long, windy video, I don't even honestly know if this was like a clear path video, but I just wanted to talk through it because I thought I was really, really in tune with my interests because I talk about them so much. I talk so, so much on booktube, as you can see by the super long video. I thought, of course, I would know what kinds of books that I like, but I think since college, I haven't really thought about it that much because I started college interested in Victorian lit, and now I thought, oh yeah, I'm interested in post-colonial lit, but I didn't really realize how dramatically the time periods that I'm interested in shifted and how I like modernism now, and I didn't realize, and so here we are, taking you from Winnie the Pooh and Twilight all the way to Dashiell Hammett. That's my reading so far. I'm sure it will continue to change because I started college four years ago, which is this small of a time span. It's literally the blink of an eye, and so maybe in another blink of an eye. I'll be interested in, I don't know, medieval times. Who knows? We will see. Stay tuned to catch all of my future reading evolution updates because I'm sure there will be many of them. But for now, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.